<laughs> oh, hey, everybody. Uh, uh, welcome to another episode of Hey Man. I'm Josh. Hi, I'm Jacob. Hey, man. Hey, man. What's up? What's going on? First of all, we are back from our UK Europe extravaganza. And I want to say right off the bat how grateful I am for all of you who listen to this podcast. The numbers are growing, growing, growing. And the people come out to the show. Yo, I really just go back that we have the best fans. We have the best. I will tell you guys, when I have friends come and do guest sets, at my shows, they're always like, dude, these are great crowds. You guys are amazing. Mm-hmm. You're great comedy crowds. And and the, the comments and the everything that we get here on on um the podcast are amazing. Remember, if you guys want to help us out, make sure you download or rate or subscribe or leave a comment wherever you listen to or watch this. It will help us out a lot. We will be in Naples, Florida next week, the 15th and 16th. And then our December is packed, guys. I'm telling you, every weekend except Christmas. And these are weekends that, without Jacob, uh, are strongholds for the Josh Wolf crew. Yeah, we always sell out. So we're going to be in Kansas City, St. Louis, Mohegan Sun Comics out there, and Phoenix with a one nighter in Columbia, Missouri. I was just going to say, yeah, at the Blue Note, guys. Uh, these always sell out, anyways. So if you and Nashville on the 17th at one night only and with those shows that we do there, just know that these shows always sell out. Um, so if you want to go to any of these shows in December, the time to get the tickets are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, comedian, Josh Wolf.com for tour dates. And again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, we, we both Jacob and I are, are um, excited and ready for this. Um, we see where this is going to the next level. And we're really excited about it. And the last thing I want to say about the shows, a lot of people have been asking because of the clips that we both post. The show is not he and I on stage together for an hour and a half. No. Jacob does 10 to 15 minutes. I do an hour to an hour 10. He does, he and I come on stage. We do a Q&A, which sometimes goes 10 and sometimes goes 30. Um, yep. And then we do uh, a song or two and that's it. I will tell the tell you the music has been getting uh, shorter and shorter. Yeah, as the the Q and A's for Jacob and I have gotten better and better. Right. So, um, with all that being said, man, let let's just let's spend this talking about the trip. Yeah, I think so. And how? And I guess we go from city to city. Yep. I mean, you'll have to you'll have to take over midway for of the course. second half. Yep. And we'll tell you why when we get there. Ugh. Um. But I mean. Let's just start with the fact that your mom and I on the trip from Dallas to Dublin got upgraded first and you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Let's also talk about though how I'm able to sleep on a plane and yeah. enjoy myself and you're not. So Well, this isn't like a Well, I, you rubbed something in, I wanted to rub something in, so I just thought I would take an eye for an eye. I, yeah, yeah. I will tell you, I, I get no problem. I slept. I mean, I watched what do I usually do to go to sleep? I'm, I mean, you usually smoke weed. But yeah, but I also watch Lord of the Rings. Did you watch all three again? I watched two and a half. That's crazy. I, on the way like, back the from way, London, on, too. Like, on the way to Australia, you watched all three uncut Lord of the Rings. Fuck yeah. And didn't sleep for the entire flight. Your boy slept the entire flight. I know like, you I did. slept I know you did. the whole 14 hours. I got... I through as many edibles as I could down my system. I was barely awake for the meal. Do you remember that? Yeah. Like yeah. I was literally nodding off while the food was in front of me. And I was like, yeah, I'm just, Dude, I'm, I'm going to bed. Can I, I tell sleeping. you something else, which was crazy sitting in front of me on first class from Dallas to Dublin was the actor from Billy Elliot, the young kid. I forget his name. Mom told me who it was. I can't remember. Oh, Dude, and Billy Elliot, I was geeking out a little bit because as far as father son stuff, that's the first real movie that I can remember just weeping like a pussy. I've never even seen that movie. Oh, dude, it's so much good father son stuff. But um, he's forever Billy Elliot, and um, he, when he walked in front of me, I was just like, <laughs> "She goes, yeah." I go, "That's Billy Elliot." <laughs> she goes, "Okay." I said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the movie." She was like, do not watch Billy Elliot. You're behind Billy Elliot. <laughs> Absurd. And I was like, no, no, but that way maybe if he walks by me and he sees me watching Billy Elliot, he'll be like, I'm Billy Elliot. She was like, 
That's he, the exact opposite yeah, of what he'll do. <laughs> she was like, no, he'll, he's going to think you're a stalker. Yeah, he'll yeah. see you <laughs> watching Billy Elliot, and then he'll go, oh, no, I think he knows I'm Billy yeah, Elliot. Yeah, yeah. And then he's going to ask the pilot yeah. for a seat change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to say no, and then the, the guy's going to come in and go, I'm Billy Elliot. You're getting me a seat change, and it's going to work way better than your ask for a seat change, for sure. I'm not sure what the last 30 seconds that you just said meant at all. Like he would go, he would see it, go ask the pilot or a flight attendant and be like, Hey, I need a seat change. Oh yeah. yeah and he'd yeah, be like, nah. And then he'd be I, like, well, I, I'm Billy Elliot. I don't. So, so I, they're going to get him a seat change. I don't know. I, yeah, I didn't watch Billy Elliot behind Billy Elliot. I feel like you still did actually. I didn't. I didn't. Um, but what, first of all, the flight to Dublin was easy and slept and fun. And I slept a big chunk of it too. And I will tell you, for, our first stop was in Dublin. And um, you know why Dublin surprised me first and foremost? Huh. And Dublin did surprise me, everybody. I thought Dublin was just going to be drunk white people. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was just going to be, hey, oh, uh, well. I Don't got, try that. Yeah. No, I tried. No, no, no. Yeah, I tried it, but it didn't work. Nope. Hold on. I'm going to try it. Oh, I'm up in the and Dublin. Hmm. Who the fuck is this guy? I tried to get some words out, but it didn't work. I am from Dublin. Nah. Anyways, I thought it was just going to be drunk. It was so much more diverse than, than I ever imagined. But you know what was crazy? For, uh, we went out to Dublin. We went out for dinner after our show in Dublin. Oh, my God. And I said to the dude, I said, I'd love a, a Guinness. And he said, cool, but we... We, we don't only, have we don't have it on tap. We only offer it in the can. I'm like, are you sure I'm in Dublin right now? Yeah, yeah, that was really strange. And he's like, but you can't taste the difference. And I was like, that's a negative, Ghost Rider, because you can absolutely taste yeah. the metal in your drink when it comes out of a can. Like that's not something that just goes away. Now you did sleep for a day in Dublin, right? And then was up for a day in Dublin. Well, because when we got there, I remember I had slept so much on the plane. Yeah, and like in the middle of the day. That I was up all night, remember? And then you and mom ended up coming across the hall at 5 a.m. into my room. Yeah. Well, actually, mom came over around 4 a.m. Yeah. Because she was like, I don't want to turn on a light, but I need to make some tea. And I don't want to bug your dad. I was like, come on over, Rover. Because I was sitting up at 4 a.m. <laughs> watching British TV, <laughs> eating Korean food in my bed. Like, I, I, I've been stuck on yeah. TikTok watching these yeah. two white guys who study Korean. And so they like it was their, it was their college major. So they travel back and forth between Korea. And all of their videos are just like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. Let's go eat something in Korea. And I'm like, these are the best videos. Cause I just like, I, you know me, I love Asian food. Yeah. And I've never really been, I've never really had a Korean food phase. I'm in it right now. It's delicious. God damn it. Kimchi is probably my new favorite thing of all time. You know what? I love bim bam bap. Bim bop. It's called bim bam bap. Is there a, is there another one? I thought yeah, it was there's just... a couple of bim bops and bim bam bap. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot Dude. of, a lot of interesting things, but yeah, I, I was so hungry at like 11 p.m. in Dublin when you guys were asleep. I was like, I wonder if they have Korean food here. And they have Uber Eats and they had Korean food. So I ordered a <laughs> man. I ordered a fried kimchi and beef thing with uh, just some with it was like a fried rice, I guess, with another side of just steamed rice. Fire. Jacob. I was just picking on that until like the, 6 a.m. The very amazing. first Korean food I ever had. I was in Seattle. And the Korean restaurant was right next to the the original Comedy Underground. And um, it was just this little hole in the wall, but the food was so fucking good. And so one day, one night, we're at the Comedy Underground, and we look across the alley, and you can see in the kitchen. And we're like, and they got a pot on the stove just simmering. And we're like, look at that food. It's going to be so good, so good tomorrow. We were all the comics. We were like, fuck yeah. And then we saw just a little tail out of the pot. And then another tail. And then two ginormous rats. And we never ate there again. But we all Enjoyed felt like throwing it. up. Yeah, I probably would have thrown up on the spot. You, you, because they had left the pot out and the, just the rats and then they served it the next day. Oh, oh, I thought they didn't. I didn't thought they left it out so the rats got in it. I thought they purposely put the rats in it. No, dude. Oh, they, okay. they just left it out. You thought they were cooking the rats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By yeah. the way, legit. That's e what I was gonna say. Either like, way. like, here's the thing. Like, I would have been grossed out and been like, "Did I eat that?" But then I'd have been like, "It did taste really fucking good." So I don't know if I'm really that mad at it anymore. Do, I say, do you know what I'm saying? Though? Yeah, like, but I, I think I would rather eat cooked rat than eat something the rats have been shitting and pissing on. Well, just so you know, if the rat is in the boiling water, they're dead. Uh, this is what I'm saying. I would rather eat cooked rat 
then eat. It's just simmering. They're just eating off of whatever's in the pan. And yeah. I mean, I guess it's not hot enough to cook. Them. Nah, nah. And it probably wasn't. I mean, I've, honestly, they probably just left it on the stove overnight. Yeah. Without it being on. But I, I would much rather eat a cooked rat because I'm sure at some point in my life I have. Hmm. Bummer. Why? You too. Why? How? Or pigeon or some type of meat that we didn't want. I mean, Do you look, think I, I, all of the meat you've ever eaten has just been that meat? No, nah, I mean, look, I'm a big fan of gas station fried chicken, so there's a good chance that I've probably eaten something yeah, else. Yeah, gas station meat, I'm out on. Are you kidding me? Gas station fried chicken? Top tier food. Top tier. You you never, you weren't in that phase. In the South, those gas stations are like full-blown markets. They have some of the best food Dude, ever. Meat from a gas station. Nope. I mean, I'm 100% it's out It's one of, in, in Lake Charles, the gas station where you go get all the food yeah. is one of the only places you can get the boot in. Have you seen the people working at the gas stations? Yeah, they put, a lot, of, they put a lot of love into that you food. You think they're taking care with the cleanliness of, they're making, and I don't blame them, they're making minimum wage, they get shit on every day. Yep. They are not making sure that you are health grade quality A at the gas station. Yeah. Now there is barbecue in Kansas City at a gas station, but it's separate from the gas station. It's the best gas. It's the best barbecue in Kansas City. We'll go there when we're there okay. in December. But I'm still standing on top of my on on top of my statement that gas station, like like the correct, like Southern gas station food. I'm sure it's delicious. It's amazing. I'm not saying it's there's not a, good, but I'm just saying it they they should just name that explosive diet. There's a gas station in LA on the co- or the corner of Colfax and I think it's Riverside. Okay. It's like a it's right next to where the police station is yeah, in North yeah, Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Some of the best fried chicken I've ever had. Yeah, I'm just not you gotta go right at noon though, or else it gets soggy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're so good, fresh out. Oh my yeah, god. Zero chance. Yeah, yeah. I love gas station fried chicken. Okay, all right. Well, I'm this However, man. I did get offered at 7-Eleven the other night. They're like, hey, we're about to take, we're about to throw everything out in this, in this, you know, our hot section. Do you want anything? And I was like, hmm, you know, how long has this all been in here? And they're like, good first question to ask. And I was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't like your response. Yeah, uh, I agree. I was like, I was like, cause I was kind of high. So I was like, ah, uh, well, like honest opinion on the chicken wings. They were like, don't. And I was like, great. Why did you ask me if I fucking <laughs> wanted anything? Like, <laughs> I was like, what would you recommend? They were like, honestly, I was eating like, somewhere else. Yeah. I was like, don't yeah. say that. I was like, what do you recommend? And they're like, well, if I had to pick and I was like, no, no, no. no. What would you pick? And they're like, nothing. Do you eat like, gas well, station then- sushi? No. Okay. Well, why is, why you say it like that? When one you just is said, cooked, one is not. When you just said gas station food is next level. I said gas station fried chicken and okay. like gas station, like that meat, Meats. the Southern, the, the Southern gas station don't sell sushi. You, are you eating a hot dog? No, nah, but I've eaten a 7-Eleven slice of pizza before or a taquito. Yeah, okay. I've eaten a hot dog right. from 7-Eleven too before. But we're in Dublin. And now let me give you my, because your mom and I walked around a bunch. Yeah. First of all, beautiful. I didn't get to go to the Leprechaun Museum this time. Yeah. Which was a bit of a bummer. All right. But walking around Dublin with your mom was, we had such a good time. And we were blown away by how cool those, it was so diverse, man. Right. Such crazy how diverse it was. And um, I will tell you, I walked by the best Lebanese place I've ever eaten in my life. I ate there last time I was there. Your mom didn't want to eat there this time. But we had such a good time walking around in Dublin. And I loved that theater we were in. Yeah. The theater we were in were, was amazing. Um, and it was your first performance overseas. Um, and, um, it, it, I thought, I thought the, uh, the Dublin show was fantastic. The people who came out to see it were so fucking excited. Yeah, me. absolutely. I didn't think I'd had the best performance in all honesty. I felt a little rough, but mainly because I tried to do a story I haven't done in four months. Yeah. Something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And I tried to pull it out just because it is Halloween and apparently Halloween in Dublin was like, it, it originated in Halloween. So it's like a big deal for everybody. I think there are a lot of places that claim Halloween yeah, but, started, but it's like, I knew it was going to be rough because I brought it up and I was like, I hear Halloween's big here in Dublin. There was one person who was like, eh. And I was like, oh, this joke is not going to slap. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I cut around a lot of it. And in all honesty, I cut a lot of the funny out of it because I was like, truthfully, that was the only show where I was like, 
I'm going to get the hook off this fucking stage. Like, like at any point in time, like I could, I could see them, some of them staring at me like, yeah, like we're glad that you're here, but you should probably bring your dad. Out nah, dude, <laughs> I thought you did really well, man. And it was hard. Those are hard shows to go up in a theater on a Tuesday when yeah. not, when nobody's really drunk and to go up cold. I thought you did a great job. Dude. I appreciate it. I thought you did my, and let's, so let's say what our favorite parts of each city were. Yeah. I, I didn't get to do much in Dublin. Uh, just because I slept like the day we got there. Yeah. And then the next day I slept again because I was up for 18 hours or something like that. Um, so I think my favorite thing about Dublin uh, was probably that Korean food I had. I'm not going to lie. Like just, I, it was hilarious to me. Just like in that moment in my life, I was up at 2 a.m. I was up from the hours of 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. in my room watching British television in Ireland eating Korean food. Yeah. And there's just a lot of things in it that makes me laugh. Dude. Like there's like, you, like all the things I just said are like, what? none of those would ever come about at the same time ever again. But it did on this trip. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I just really enjoyed like the, just like the little moments that I had. They, even though they were by myself, they were like it was like. I mean, yeah, you I, got your own hotel room this I time. I made a TikTok out of me eating Korean food. Yeah. It was really like yeah, I had a good time. It was it was. Uh, you know, we did. Your mom and I got to watch a lot of local TV. We watched. There I was found, something I in Dublin. The, I found the American TV channels. We we did too, but we 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 liked fucking about, and we saw some in Dublin called, which I, when she, when we started for watching it, I'm like I'm gonna hate this. But it was called Teen First Date I or saw something it too. like that. I saw it in Glasgow. And it was so cool because they, there was, there was, they didn't pick the too cool for school teens. No. They picked teens who had still had some innocence and naivete. And the dates were very awkward. And during the day at lunch, so there was nothing creepy or sexual about yeah. them. But I was fascinated by these teens. Like your mom and I were watching, like, this is a really crazy awkward yeah like it was kind of fun to watch people who still weren't so sure with themselves try i, I thought it was a really cool yeah, i ended up stumbling upon it when we were in glasgow after you know our incident and i was eating my thought my you know feelings away in my yeah. room i was yeah te teens first day came on and i was like it wasn't that bad was nah, it? it wasn't that bad yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah because they didn't pick like they didn't pick the too cool for school kids, but they also didn't pick the people who needed the most absolute help. Like yeah. they were like, we got to find some sort of happy medium where we're not picking like the person no one would want to go on a date with, but we're also not picking the one that everybody wants to go on a date yeah, with. It was, I agree. it was a nice, it was a nice middle ground. I, so my favorite thing about Dublin, honestly, I was just incredibly surprised by how nice everybody was how diverse it was. Yeah. I was expecting and, a bunch of Conor McGregor's walking yeah, around. Yeah, dude, me too. And not, no offense to you people. No, not, not, no offense to everybody of Ireland, but that's that's just But it was I, such a really it, yeah. cool place. The cobblestone streets, the thin streets in this little area we were in were beautiful. Um, I was bummed we didn't get to go to the Dublin Castle, but I had been there before. Yeah. But for me, I had never been to St. Patrick's Cathedral. We were and, right next to it. Fucking gorgeous. Cool. Straight up gorgeous. Um, and honestly, low key, one of my other favorite things was to FaceTime my mom and dad from everywhere we went. Oh yeah. 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 Cause you said you wanted to do that. Yeah. Just so they could see kind of the places they went, um, I would, that we were. And, and so, but I really love that about Dublin. It, that was a huge surprise for me. Yeah. It was fun. All right. And so we had a great show and then we hopped on a, well, I mean, we had that, we had that meal then where you had a can of Guinness. We had that pork belly, which was pretty good. And then we hopped on a train or a plane to Belfast. Train. Train to Belfast. Yeah. Yo, Belfast, that show was fucking fire. Yeah, it was pretty fun. And that venue was fucking fire. It was iconic. It was a pretty iconic venue. Same venue that Kevin Hart was at and where he did 16 nights in a row rehearsing the, while he was filming. Right. He was filming a movie. But at night, he would go to this club and this is where the where he went and he perfected the special he just put out. Right. Uh, Oasis was on stage here when they first found out that they had a number one hit. Number one album. Number one album. Super. The when you, Stairway to Heaven was a, for played for the first time down the street from the club. In Belfast. Yeah. Stairway to Heaven was the first time it was played in Belfast, which is an interesting fact. But but this venue was super cool and super iconic. And what made one of my show favorite shows because I just turned the entire show. I did a couple jokes up front and then just did Q and a for the rest of the show. Yeah. And which led me to other jokes and other stories, but man, 
Belfast felt super blue collar, yeah. super working class. We were in a great hotel. Um, yeah, oh, but, yeah, the the Grand Belfast. But yo, dude, for real, that fucking little food court that, that it was like not food trucks. Oh, the the shipping containers. That we but oh, the, it was, instead of food trucks, guys, they, all, they were all in shipping containers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a cool little spot. Um, I really liked the feel of the show of Belfast. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. So, what 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 did you feel about Belfast? I liked Belfast a lot. I thought it was uh, the hotel. I thought was gorgeous. I thought the city was was really awesome. But again, we were we I mean we were only there for sixteen hours. Yeah, not even. So when we got there, we all had a meal. We took a nap, and not then we, me. I went out and walked around. Oh yeah, I took a nap. Yeah, yeah. And then you came back, and we went to the show. Yeah, and that was and then that but, was one of the places that didn't have a gym. Yeah, can we talk about the fact that three out of the five hotels that we were at in the UK it's didn't weird. have a gym? It was a little weird not to have a gym. I, I, like I like this is I, I like I know we're gonna, but it's like I, every hotel I've ever been to has a gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little weird not to have a gym. But, yeah, and for all the jokes about the Americans being the the big ones, like not having your the dude. hotels and the gyms, I think is. Uh, listen, there's no doubt after this trip, and I, I'll jump ahead. I was getting into a cab in Amsterdam. And the guy goes, where are you from? I was like, America. And he goes, well, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> and I said, why not? He goes, I can usually tell Americans by their fat fucking faces, <laughs> is what he said. And I was like, yo, you're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I, that listen, dude. is foul. I travel a lot, right? I will. You know the one thing? I'm, you, you see some heavier people. You know what I didn't see? Obese. I didn't see obese at all. I did not see obese at all. All in the UK and Europe. Obese? I saw one or two. Okay. Yeah. But you can see one or two, one or two when we get off of a plane in Ohio. We're going to see one or two when we walk outside. Yeah, dude. It was shocking to me. But yeah, because their, their servings are regular size. Do, do, do. Yeah. That's it. Like, That's like, it. They serve a regular amount of food. Yeah. It's a, when, when, when the first plate went down. Yo, because you know I'll eat five eggs in the morning. When we were, the first place I went and they were like, oh, how many eggs? Come and they were like two. I go, can I get three more? And and they said out loud, "You want five eggs on the same plate?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Not now, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> now I want two. Yeah. yeah, dude. The the not only the serving size, but people walk and get on their fucking bicycles. Well, yeah, because driving driving is so fucking hard out there. You we were in the cabs. You know how hard it is driving that city, dude. In Amsterdam, bicycles are the they have the right of way over cars. Yeah. They, they just bing bing on people ring ding on their bikes, and there's but it gets confusing because there's so many ring rings. You just don't know where they're coming from. They, yeah, they're coming from all over, and you're high, and you're like, oh, there's so many ring rings. <sighs> yeah, it was a little confusing. But Belfast, dude, the meet and greet, the people we met. Yeah, I was so overly impressed with how friendly people were in Ireland. Absolutely, it was amazing to me. The the cab drivers that I had were amazing. Remember that first dude I got in the car with from the from the train station in Belfast to the hotel? Oh, oh the dude who got went to jail? Yeah, for yeah. how many kilos? What was it like? Seventy kilos yeah, of seven, weight. It was like seventy kilos. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, I was in jail. I got busted for seventy kilos of weight. I'm like, how many is that? He goes, it wouldn't even fit in this car. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, <laughs> seventy kilos is closer to uh, 155 Dude, pounds a of weed. That's a lot. That's like a, I don't know what year that was, but that street value is crazy. He said it was a million dollars street value. What year though? I don't. I don't know. Years ago, he was probably 20 years ago. So street value now is probably yeah crazy. Inflation that, is a bitch. Dude, that guy was so fun. He was funny. The, the other guy, you took got me. all the good cab drivers. Dude, the, the cab drivers that mom and I had. Didn't say a goddamn word. The cab driver, the other cab driver I got, because we had to split up a lot. We had so many bags. Yeah. That, that got me from the, because we, listen. So uh, when we were going, guys, we got up and we needed a, a, a cab from Belfast to the Belfast airport to fly to London. Yes. And so we were like, hey, can you set us up? The night before. The night we before. We went to the front desk. A cab for what time? I forget whatever time. 7.45. And we came down and they were like, hey, the cabs are running late because it's raining. And I was like, doesn't it rain here all, all the, the time? time? And they said, yes. And that was it. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So, and she said, yeah, we can't drive in the rain. I'm like, that's weird. Just so everybody knows, and most for me, the Americans, I hope this makes you feel better. Nobody can drive in the rain, apparently, because 
Actually, I don't have a reason for that. I, I why it was why, crazy. Why is it that I'm I'm crazy. not scared of driving in the rain? You're not scared of driving in the rain. No. But it's like anybody else on the planet is like it's the end of the world, dude. So it rains all the time. Yeah, that's what the guy, the cab driver, was like. It's infuriating because it rains here all of the time, and people can't drive in the rain. But he did say when it rains, nobody takes the bus. So they drive themselves. So, so it's a there's just busier. more. There's, so people avoid but public transportation. This dude was funny too. I go, how many kids you got? He goes, I got three. I go, how old? He goes, 26, 20, and 14. 666. It's a sign of the devil. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I go, you tell your kids that? He goes, I remind them of that every day. Yeah, that's a good dad. Um, but <laughs> but the Belfast show, dude, we have footage from that show. I can't wait for people to see the. It was so fucking cool. Yeah, one of one of my favorite shows. They were all such. It, I could have picked up great things from all of them, but amazing. And so we get into London, where your buddy Jake, yep, lives. Yep, might have been one of my favorite hotels. The yeah, ho- it was a cool. Hotel. The hotel was fucking. We're dope also state. right next to the to that power district. So oh like we yeah. Were, we were, we were in the middle. It kind of gave me like NoHo Arts District feel. Like it was like kind of an up and come, way better than NoHo Arts District. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Like when Arts District was first kind of there and up and coming and things were popping up, that place was hopping. Yeah. And now it's just part of North Hollywood. And dude, we went to Dishoom to eat. That Indian food was like so I, fucking how, good. How long have I been talking about it? Since we booked the London I game. I want you to know, I messaged Jake's girlfriend. Your friend. Yeah. Almost two months in advance. I was like, hey, so this is the date of the show. It's the 27th. But I don't know what our day off is going to be, what our travel is going to look like. But the minute I know what day, can you book the reservation for me? And she was like, yeah, of course. You see now why I had to book that reservation a month in advance. You saw the line, the key when we walked yeah, out. Yeah. There was a hundred people waiting At to least. walk in At least. to that line. Yeah. I don't know if there's a single restaurant I've ever been to that I would be willing to wait more than 40 minutes no, for. No way. In a line standing for 40 minutes? No way. 40 minutes is absolute max, let alone two hours. Dude, we went to Moulin Rouge that night in the yeah. West End. And in the play, one, you know, one of my favorite movies. Right. Uh, all time, if I'm being honest, the amount of times I've seen it, top 10. And the amount of times I've seen it, I can watch that movie over and over and over. Because the truth of the matter is, what I like watching is I like watching what I consider to be real. And Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman's, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, not compatibility, but... Um, chemistry? Chemistry was real. You'll never convince me that they weren't fucking. There's, there, nobody's that good of an actor or actress to pretend that there's that kind of magnetic chemistry. It was, you could not take your fucking eyes off of it. Now, I'm going to tell you that the Moulin Rouge stage was nothing like that at all. Oh, my God. I bet. Dude, let me just say. Let me just say. And, I, and, and, and I, you know I'm not. Well, I can't. I won't go into it. Because you know I don't criticize other people's, other people's stuff. Art. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was great. Visually, it was amazing. I feel like, you're, I feel like the better way to say it is like you had some sort of expectation because you've seen the movie so many times yeah. that you had an expectation of what it was going to look like. But then you got there and remember that it wasn't a movie and that it was a play in front of you and it probably wasn't going to look exactly the same. Got nothing to do with look. I understand it's not going to look the same. I did not walk out of there. Yo, that play, that story hinges on that chemistry. You have to want them to be together. Oh, oh, so that... You have to want them to beat the odds. And when she dies, that... that, Spoiler alert. I've never never seen the movie. You've never seen Moulin Rouge? No. Okay. But when she dies... (laughs) You... Says it again. (laughs) You want, like, you want to be like, oh, I died a little too. But when she died, I was like, yeah, it's a bummer. But, but also, you knew it was coming. But I feel like everybody who was saw that. I feel it every time I watch the movie. Come on me. Come on me. Are you saying, come on me? No. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like, it sounds like you're saying, come on me. That's what it sounds like. That would change <laughs> that movie altogether. It would. It would. I, uh, I'm trying to think about if if Nicole Kidman was just <laughs> singing "Come on Me." Well, Come on well, Me. Well, what was she actually saying? It sounded I exactly think, the same. Come what May? Oh, come what May? Yeah. 
<laughs> By the way, that just sounds like an Irish person saying, come on me anyway, so. Come on, May. Come what, May. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too far off. I mean, <laughs> yeah. There's a difference, but it's the not that far The story was off. a little different, which I didn't mind because it, it shook things up for me, but there was some real, and the bad guy, I can't say I wasn't rooting for him in the play. What do you mean? I liked him more than I liked the lead. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I'm all right with this dude. It's yeah. Funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it was very cool to get dressed up and go out with your mom. And, and, um, I, so that night was amazing to go to Dishoom and then, and dude, the hotel. At in our room, anyways, not yours. It had a record player. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it had ten records, and the records. It was a Miles Davis record. It was a Stevie Wonder record. It was two Beatles. Stevie record. Runder? Yeah, it was a it's <laughs> low key Stevie Wonder. We couldn't afford Stevie Wonder record, so it's a Stevie Runder. <laughs> okay, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can he see? He, no, no, he can see, but he can't hear. No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's different. Yeah, it's a really. It's a. He sings mm, 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 like that. And yeah, <laughs> did you just sing signing? <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, I just but, don't want to do that because I don't know what else. Yeah. I but, can't say anything in sign language except, ex- except. Except what? What can you do in sign language? Well, I know this is cactus. It is? Yeah. With the thumb out. I know it's cactus. I know this is bullshit. Yeah. I do know that's yeah. bullshit. I know that, uh, that this is snake. I know this means something good. I, I think this means Please, please, or more, more. And, um, and, and I doesn't th- this this means I love you? Isn't this thank you? Thank you, yeah. And then yeah. this means like under the chin is fuck you. Oh yeah, yep. Um, I think I think this is something. Relax <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that means bukkake. Um, relax over there. <laughs> Anyways, we're in London. I love yo, know, dude. The so that night was awesome. To, yeah. And to be out there at Piccadilly was amazing. And Did you guys go? To, oh, that's where the... Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you went out with your friend that night, right? I went out with Jake. Uh, we just went to his flat and went to a, a, a pub down the street, had a couple drinks. Uh, he, had a, he had class in the morning. So we just had a couple drinks, and then uh, I went on my merry way. Can I tell you something embarrassing that happened to me the next morning? Blowout? We're, we're, no, we're down oh. having breakfast. And I ordered the first time I had breakfast when she looked at me crazy and I was like, can I get the, the, can I get four eggs? And, um, I was like, I'll have some of these eggs in soldiers. And I I didn't know what that meant. Oh, I thought those were potatoes. Nope. They're not. They're little slices of bread. And so what you're supposed to do is crack that comes out in a little cup and you're supposed to crack the top and dip the eggs in. Dip the bread in the eggs. Dip the bread in the eggs. Cut the top. Well, I had to YouTube because they came out. I had to YouTube how to, and then by that, time, I couldn't figure it out. And so I just mushed them all together <laughs> and ordered some potatoes. Like a straight American. Straight up. And I told her, I go, excuse me, I'm an American. I didn't know. I had to go, I had to YouTube this and I can't figure it out. And she, I go, can I mush them all together? She's like, you, you already ordered. You can do whatever. It's the, your food. Yeah, you, you can, can do, do whatever you want. you want. I go, I don't need any soldiers. I just need some potatoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, um, but your mom and I, we went, we had like seventy eight white flat whites, and yeah. that's in breakfast. And you guys uh, were jacked up all oh, trip. Dude, I was fucking <laughs> flying on on flat whites. Um, but th- was that the afternoon we went out and walked around? That was the afternoon. No, yes. Didn't we walk around a little bit? Yeah, but- we 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 went and ate at that Gordon Ramsay restaurant in the powerhouse. Huh? That was the day before. That was the day we got there. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that first. We, we we're gonna just can't just skip over that. We did, that, that was oh we, yeah, we did that and Deshoom in yeah. the same day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That Gordon Ramsay was Whoa, really. Oh my god, that Gordon Ramsay restaurant was so good. Yeah, what the fuck, it was delicious. But, but he lived did, upstairs. So, yeah, so they but, had they had like he has a place upstairs. So of the, of the power and light uh, is that what it's called? No, power district. Power it's district. The, the Battersea Power District. And so he had been there the day before. So when he lives upstairs, they got to run his restaurant fucking correctly. Yeah, tip top, my good. Yeah, but he was like, the, our server was like, you just missed Gordon by a day, and I was like, what? He goes, yeah, he he lives upstairs, and I was like, what? 
Why? Why did Gordon live in the Battersea Power District? Yeah. And not in a ginormous house. And Sting. Sting lives up there? Sting has a place up there. Come on, me. I'm not going to get that out of my head. No. <laughs> I'm so glad that's what I heard. I will love you until you come on, man. <laughs> it's way better than come what may. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Would it you, changed the whole movie. Dude, make a parody. <laughs> can, you, can you clip this? I'm throwing my hand up for a clip because I'm going to forget the marker. Oh, I won't. But instead of come what may, I'm gonna come need it. On me. I'm gonna need a uh, uh, piano. Need a, I'll need somebody else to sing it with me. It's two people. It's a man and a woman singing the song. I might be able to sing in a higher tone than you. I don't think we should be singing "Come On Night" together. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and bow out of you doing it. How about that? <laughs> yeah, Are you good with that? I think that would be so funny. Yeah, oh my god! I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, no. We're going to look okay. into each other's eyes and sing that. I think it would be, if you and I could neither of us keep our, like, keep our laughter in, I think it would be super funny. It would be bananas. <laughs> I think it would be hilarious. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, but, but, but I will tell you, man, I thought I was going to buy, some, I wanted to buy clothes in every place we went. I only bought it in London. I bought that one thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to buy my, the clothes in different countries because you just don't see stuff like that in the States. Uh, when we get, when we get to Europe, I'll let you know my idea on fashion from here on out. It is, I, I'm, it may have changed me forever. Good. I dress like you did. Relax. No, you don't. A little bit. Look at us. Are you telling me we're not in the same ballpark? You're telling me you have as much swag as me and light up Lightning McQueen Crocs? I would not False. call light up Lightning McQueen, McQueen Crocs. McQueen Crocs swag. swag. Absolutely they are. The fact that you think you're matching the steez level that I have with these on is so incredibly false. Like Dude, your, your dementia is already setting Those in. are not swag. They light up. They're definitely swag. Absolutely. You know, you know what? Also, the Lightning McQueen, so my Crocs are never not in sport mode. I just want you to know Let that. me tell you something. You're wearing red Crocs with white socks. Do you think I'm wearing white socks? What socks are you wearing? They're tie-dye. That's not better. I would wear them with white socks, too. Yeah, what yeah. What are we talking about? That's not better. The, the, I mean, I guess that's... Is that swag? Look, all I'm saying is, if we... If you had ended up... Wait, no, you did buy that shirt at Carl Lagerfeld. Yes. Don't chat to me. That shirt, I, I, I gave you my thoughts on it. I don't, you're one hundred percent wrong. I don't think I am. I know you are, dude. I don't think I am. I know you are. I don't think I am. I know you are. Why? Because mom are. says she likes it. No, dude. Because I, are you telling me? Have you seen the size of the collar? You won't get the Doug Dimmodome reference, but it's like the Doug Dimmodome of collars. Like, yeah, you, you know, it's a fairly odd parents reference. Somebody else will get this when we. Clip it. When I wear that shirt. I can't wait to tag you in it. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm Swaggy P. You're like a gay rodeo clown in that shirt. Gay rodeo clown. No, dude. That is... <laughs> he had to think about it. Yeah, I had to think about, what the, to... I had to think about what the shirt looked like. <laughs> I got, dude, it is... It, I'm telling you I'm right telling now, you, if I put you in a tight pair of Wranglers, a, 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 dude, a, dude, a, but... a, a pair of boots that matches that shirt and a hat that matches that shirt, and walking out, I could put you at Ferguson's in 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 Fremont, and you yeah, would. Do you want me to dress you around that hoodie? And I bet you I could dress you around that hoodie to make you not like that hoodie. I you're, don't think you could. What? It's a gray hoodie. How are you going to dress me around? The I'll gray put hoodie? you in tight Wranglers with shiny cowboy boots. I didn't say shiny cowboy boots. You said shirt to match, shoes to match the. I'm just saying. You, obviously, but also. There's not a lot of things you can put me in to not like it. You've tried that before. I'm not one who gets embarrassed when you dress me up and shit. I, well, this is your, your, first of all, you're getting defensive for your, your, first of all, that, know, was, little, that was, that was the argument. Can I just say that you're a little all. punchy today? Am I? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You are a little punchy today. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 You okay? No, I know. <laughs> you're a little punchy. You're a little, little punchy. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, but do you want to talk about anything else? Nope. Okay. Do you think I want to? No, no, no. no, no. I no. mean, do should we? Is there? Any, would you? Is there, is there anything you'd like to talk about that may will make you less less punchy? Or no, no, no. I'm just. I'm just well, I only got punchy because you said you dress like me, and I was, and I was just defending I, that I wouldn't buy that shirt, and then giving my reasons why. Okay. Anyways, we're in London. 
And I will say the London show was awesome. I loved it. And you were on fire. I felt really comfortable in that show. Yeah. And in front of, I bet you it was the show you were most nervous for because your friends were there. Well, in all honesty, it was the one show that I was like, not nervous for, but knew I had to do well. Why, why, why? why? Because my friend was there. And like, there's not a lot of my friends who have seen me do stand up yet. Like it's like a handful of people. So I'm trying to keep the streak going. You know what I'm saying? And of course, no matter what, they'd be like, nah, you were great. But I want them to actually mean like, nah, you were actually, you were great. You did yeah. a really good job. And so I don't know. It's like For random people, I don't really care. But like for the people who know me, it matters. Well, you are, you're, you're getting so much more comfortable on stage. The Q&A stuff is really, really good. You were off the cuff on a couple of really, really good ones on that show. Yeah. Uh, but I was really impressed. It was also like, you know, we're not used to doing shows with intervals. So in the UK, they do a lot of intervals. They'll do, usually what they'll do is the opener, which is 20 to 30 minutes. And then they'll let some of the people go out and drink and then you come back in. Right. Um, and so we did a little interval, um, and I remember I had to pee. I was really proud of you, man. And I was like, Hey, you might have to do a joke. And you yeah. tried something brand new that you had just thought of that day and it worked really well. <coughs> yeah. Well, I mean, cause look, I love premier league football, which is like, you know, soccer for those in the States. Um, and I know that there's just running jokes about certain teams in the league and how there are certain teams in the league that nobody fucking likes other than the fans of that team. And I knew we were in London and London is either like, Oh, don't tell the joke. Don't, don't do, don't, don't, you don't have to do your joke. No, I'm saying is one of two. So like I asked the guy who sent me on stage, I was like, Hey, is this going to work? He said, yes. And he was like, it should. And I was like, that's not a, not a yes, but fuck it. Yeah. You you nailed it. I was really impressed, man. And then, uh, that was also, I think the only show of the entire trip that I got high for. Mm Mm-hmm. A good, your your buddy had brought us a little bit of weed, which was fantastic. Um, but but I I the meet and greet after that show, I would say for me, my favorite part about London was um, outside of the show, which I fucking loved, was that Dishoom restaurant and spending time with you and your mom and Jake and his now. No, no, don't say anything. Okay, and uh, Jake should have said something before. Yeah. And and his girlfriend. Girlfriend, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the, obviously my favorite part of the trip was just to see Jake. Uh, the last time I saw Jake was probably only two years ago. It was like 2021, something mm-hmm. like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. But, um, you know, I went from seeing him every day to seeing him every other, every couple of weeks to seeing him every six months to now seeing him every couple of years. Yeah. And so anytime we get to sit down, it's like, you know, him and I just pick up where we left off. There's, there's never a hiccup in the road. We, Jake and I have been through some shit. Yeah. Like we've been through some shit together. So it's and, important know, to have friends like that, man. Yeah. And there's other people I went through that shit with, but are just still not here. Yeah. Not like not dead, but just not in my life anymore. Yeah. And Jake is really one of the only ones that's been with it or through it with me who has just never faltered, never changed. Well, I can tell you, man, you know, it's I, what I do love about seeing you, um, with Jake is, uh, you know, people in your life who you're close with, who you don't change who you are around. Yeah. Shows you how good that relationship is. Yeah. You know, I've always said, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you can't take a car, a road trip, and not say anything to each other for two hours because it's too uncomfortable. That's not the person you should be in a relationship with. You you, you have to be able to be comfortable and yourself in the silence and absolutely and just in the normality of life. You know? Absolutely. And so yeah, you're very much yourself around him, and he's such a good dude. Yeah. Um, it was good to see him. I, it was good to see the two of you together. Yeah. It was so funny. Um, and then because we were taken off the next morning, right? No, that so the shoom was the night before the show. Oh, that's right, that's right. But yeah, then the show, the night of the show, obviously it was Halloween weekend, and Jake was like, "Hey, we're uh, we're going to a Halloween party. We know this ran late. Totally cool. We are glad to wait for you. Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And we had a train the next morning, but it was like a three-hour train, 
So I was like, well, I'll have time to sleep then. So the train was at 10.05, yeah. 10.45. I got back to the hotel at 7 a.m. Yep. No, yeah, 7 a.m. Yep. Packed for an hour and a half. Yeah. Got an hour of sleep and got right back up. It was amazing. That train ride was to Manchester. Is that where it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was fucking... I love the the the, the countryside is gorgeous. Yeah, you should, if, when you when you want to go back out there, we should take a trip from London to Newcastle upon Tyne and just go all the way north. Uh, by the way, I don't think the trains were ready for how much fucking luggage we brought. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we bought first class tickets. Though we each had two big bags, and your mom had a third small one. But technically, I had four bags. Huh? I had four bags. I had the two rollers, a duffel full of shoes, and my backpack. Holy shit! Yeah. I had a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah because pro- you were planning on a 16-day trip. Yep. And, <laughs> and we'll get to that. What a lot, what honestly, <laughs> would have been really nice to only have one suitcase. Yeah, no, I'm fucking, fucking with you. Sick. Uh, but I, I, the, the, the train rides, I really were nice, as opposed to the Australia, New Zealand, was nice to Air- hop on a train. Yeah, because airports are just so tiring. Every When you're in a city for 18 hours, so then get up real early, hop on a plane, sit on, also, such a big country. Those plane rides aren't weren't just like a quick. You mean in hour. Australia? Yeah. 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 Well, just a quick hour. It was like each one was at least two hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're on there for, for just a long ass time. Um, That's all for me. It's like, it's just like also the 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 airports just tire me the fuck out. Like, I do want to do that training around Europe where I do like you know you go you, you take a train to like the Swiss yeah, Alps yeah, and yeah. like do all that and whatnot, but. On it, on, you know, with people where like, that's like our thing is like, we're going to do a day of travel on this train and just kind of hang out and we can watch movies and we'll eat and we'll, you know, we'll do yeah. whatever we can, but this will be, I'm with you. This I'll, will be the home for the day. I would do that. That seems kind of fun. Do it through like the Swiss Alps. Yeah. And, like, if you have have, that, uh, do you have your own little cabin? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. You have like your own cabin with your own door and like you have a bed in there. So it just like, it would be, it would be, it would be yeah, fun. I would, I would, I would give do that. that. Run. Me too. I would definitely do that. Yeah. Especially through like all the the countries with like the crazy Alps and the mountains and the snow and stuff like that, like I would for sure do that. I, I think Manchester was the place we were there the shortest, and I think I'm the only one who walked around. But the theater was beautiful. Yeah, because I slept in Manchester and then overslept and then had to meet you at the yeah. theater because I wasn't ready. How great was that theater? It was great. Yes, <laughs> fucking gorgeous. Super dope theater. Great and, show too. Oh yeah, that's the one where the woman screamed out. Every every guy looks a, likes a finger up the bum. And I don't know in America if that's true, but I'll tell you this. Every dude in the crowd there in Manchester was like, eh, can't argue with it. Yeah, they were all clapping. There was one dude who got really excited about it. Yeah, he was sitting right next to her. I think he was <laughs> I think he was sitting on his finger, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. By the way, this was a trip where I really decided against guitar in the act. Yeah, you did. And I went straight stories and I, I really loved it. Yeah. I did, I did. Yeah, it was all story, story, story. Yeah. And also had, yeah, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you have started changing that a little bit. And way I, less guitar than when you and I first started going out together. Way less, yeah, way less guitar than like the last year. Yeah, I, I was, I would do at least three songs. Six. six. To start? On the end of Oof. the show. I was doing at least six songs. Jeez. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now you're doing one, but with two different versions. That's pretty much it. Two different versions. The plain one? Yeah, I only do, I, I don't do two different versions of that song. One version is from one person and one version is oh, from yeah, the other. Oh, yeah, it's one song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I, okay. It's it's one song, but there's two different perspectives. So two different versions. I'm not I'm not saying you wrote two completely different. Oh, right, right, right. It's just two verses in the same. From two different perspectives. Right, 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 right. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I didn't know what you mean. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you are a little punchy. Well, I didn't, I, I was like, because you were like, they're not two different versions. And I was like, well, I mean, they kind of are because they're from two different people, which is two different perspectives. I mean, which it's is just one song, two verses. From two different perspectives is what I was just trying to get the point across. Yep. Yep. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm not arguing with you today. You, you nailed it. Yep. Um. <laughs> uh, but. Manchester, uh, it's hard to really get a good feel on the city because I walked up to one street and down, but I did get my new favorite crew neck neck sweatshirt. 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 
Ooh, well, they did call it a jumper. It's actually called a jumper. I did get my new favorite crew neck sweater Sweatshirt. shirt from Manchester. <laughs> Um, and I will say that Q and a was pretty spectacular. Yep. Wait, isn't this sweater a croc in Crocs? Is the sweater a it, crocodile in Crocs? Yes. Maybe. That's what it says. It says croc in Crocs. I want you to know that. Oh, is that what it says? Yeah. He's yeah. wearing Crocs. Yeah. Well, the, the crocodile looks cool in Crocs. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So do I. Yes, you do. I could not pull off Crocs. Honestly, I feel like Crocs are just like house slippers. They're for anybody. You just put them on. Yeah, no, 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 no. I don't think so. Okay. I, I mean, maybe in the house I could get away with Crocs. They're pretty comfy. Are Not they? Yeah. Are they more comfortable? Oh, I almost bought those fucking Prestos. Can't do it without me, though. I, I wanted to make sure they were real. I'd have to look at the box. Yeah, I'd have to, yeah, like, yeah. truthfully, like, if we're going to buy a pair of shoes like that that's not from a trusted source in a different country, I would need a black light, too. Why? Because there are certain things that if it's made in not the Nike factory, it'll react different. The adhesive they use will react differently under blacklight. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So there's just like... I, I thought I thought you were just curious in, in, in case somebody did. Come on, man. No, 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 no. There's like, there's a lot of different things, especially in a different country where those shoes probably weren't even released. Yeah. It's hard. Like, also, they're so much closer to all the makeshift fake factories in China. Yeah. So like it's probably easier to get those shoes, but like the the box the the box tag like the label would be different. Yeah, the the tag on the inside of the shoe would wouldn't be correct. Like stitching would be wrong. There's a lot of things that could have gone wrong with it. So I'm glad you didn't spend the money on it over there. We'll just we'll get them approved from a good source out here. In the yeah, States. I think you're right. I think I think if you really want to, when we go to L.A. for Thanksgiving, maybe. Also, bring your other shoes though, so we can trade them in. Good idea. Bring my bring the ones the you breads. Have. Yeah, um, dude, you. I thought you did really well in uh, Manchester. Yeah, Manchester. I had a good time. Uh, I thought the Q and A was real good. I thought the. I thought my stage time was good too. I stopped. I just I chose not to do the Halloween story. I just like it. Like I like it, and I can still do it. I just think it hits differently in the states than it does overseas. Sure, because I it, like Halloween's just so much more celebrated yeah. here. Yep. And so it just like translates better. I agree. But also I just I don't know. I feel like I like I liked my other story more. Just yeah. because I've really been honing in on it for the last it's been doing really well and yeah. you've really been working hard on it. Yeah. Um and, and so Manchester was like literally 16 hours. Yeah. Also had some ridiculous Korean food in Manchester. Yes. Those that 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 kimchi set that I got. Oh, the, so good. The pickled, oh, dude, radish. The pickled radishes. Fuck you. But can oh I just say God. real quick how at this point, I was blown away again by how amazing the crowds were and how into the stories they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just uh, midway through, I'm like, I, how grateful I was that, holy shit, you know, however many miles away from home. Yeah. And these people are hanging on every fucking word. Yep. Was so cool. It was, I, I, can't, I really have come back with a different perspective. Um, but I'll get to that towards the end, but like, I, 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 it's so amazing. I can't wait to go back. Yep. And, and to me, Glasgow, 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 you know, that venue in the bottom of the fucking old church. Super cool. <sighs> so fucking cool. Yeah. Yo, so cool. But I remember when I said to the guy who booked the show in London, I go, what should I know about Glasgow? And he said, you're not going to understand one fucking word anybody says to you. And I'll tell you what, in the meet and greet, it was a lot of, okay. Yeah, it was a just lot a lot of nodding. Lot of and like, smile and uh -huh. wave, smile and wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it was a lot of, you know what I mean? And I was like, yep. Sure. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, but so fucking enthusiastic. Yeah. So That show, that crowd was on fire, dude. And yeah. that Q&A was ridiculous. Ridiculous how good it yeah, was. Yeah, it was a fun, it was a, it was a really good show. But those people also, we ended up, so we do the show, guys. The show is amazing. Had some sticky toffee pudding. Yeah. Um, which I, that wasn't my favorite. But, but I will tell you the meal I had the next day might have been the best meal of the trip. Better than. Oh, the, the one at the hotel? No. The one I had at a tapas place from Spanish Oh, food. yeah, 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 so yeah. So fucking good. So we do the show, guys. We get up bright and early to get to the airport. 
And we're all super excited to be in Amsterdam a day early. Jacob and I are going to go to the coffee shops. And the shenanigans and tomfoolery mm-hmm. and, and lots of things. We get to the airport and boop, my passport. Boop, Beth's passport. Bam, bam, bam. Jacob's passport. And they're like, they keep trying to, they keep trying to swipe it. Every, every time. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, what's the problem? She was like, she was like, his passport expires in December. It needs to be good for at least three more months for you to get into Europe. And I was like, what? Because I remember asking, is everything all set for the trip? And you're like, yeah, everything's all set. Because it was. Yeah, I know. But no, you do not get to make fun of me for this or pick fun of me at all. Because I did all of this travel right. I know. Everything that I put in, every every plane ticket that I bought, there was mm. no disclaimer. No, dude, come on. <laughs> I know I won't. I won't. Not your legit. Okay, yeah, 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 no, like, I know I won't. Not, make you upset. It's not. That was it was a what, bummer. The most depressing part of the trip. It was a bummer because we go back to the hotel. And so we have to stay the next day because I'm gonna try to get him. Into Europe. And everybody was like... U.S. Embassy was like, yeah, sure. Every other embassy was like, nope, we don't well, want you Well, Europe was like, no. The U.S. Embassy was like, as long as his passport's good, we can let him in. And the Netherlands were like, that is not the case. Yeah, because it's not their country. Right. That's not how that works. So, it's hilarious that in every other country, the U.S. Embassy still is like, yeah, we can make it happen. I walked around Glasgow that day. Fucking, I, I'm so glad I got a day there. What a beautiful city. Yeah, the bellhop, St- Stuart was telling me, he was like, the next time you guys come, like, stay here, stay so an cool. extra couple days, and we'll take you out and show you around the city. Because he says, like, yeah, it's really it's really cultured and really awesome. And- so cool, dude. Yep. So, so, so cool. Um, and I had my favorite meal, meal of the day there at this for this Spanish tapas, tapas place. You know, I had never had grilled, like, it was a round piece of goat cheese grilled with, like, a apricot chili marmalade on top. Oh, I couldn't believe how good it was. Sounds pretty good. Oh, it was amazing. But but your mom was sleeping and you were sleeping, so I was just walking around. Yeah. I must have walked six miles that day. I got to say, though, that restaurant that was at, the, at our hotel was awesome. So good. My new favorite thing was there. The, sn- the soft-shell crab legs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delicious. For those of you who don't know, a soft-shell crab is one that a restaurant will take and Deep fry the entire thing, shell and all, and allows you to eat the entire crab, shell and all. I can't all. believe you had never had one of those. It, yo. <laughs> You've had soft shell crab. No? No, that's what I'm saying. It's not, like, that's not a thing that happens in certain states here. Really? Dude, when mom said it's been all over Louisiana, and don't get me wrong, mom, I'm not, like, discrediting you, I've never seen it once at any regular restaurant here in the States other than, like, you have to go somewhere special for it. Really? I love it. It's usually at, uh, the, I only see it at an Asian restaurant. I'll find a place and text you. So but fucking y- but good. Dude. Yo. Oh my God. It was but, one of my but, favorite things I've ever had in this also entire Also, my planet. favorite accents of the trip is the Scottish accents. My favorite accents, without a doubt, were the Scottish accents. Even though I didn't understand half of what they were saying to me, yeah. I was like just smiling like, you sound real cool. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was cool. Uh, yeah, I I definitely ate like three orders of those crab legs that night because I was upset. So I, I, know, I ate my thoughts away. Our 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 cab driver, and again, I got a good cab driver from the next morning when we were going to the airport. He, we, be, he 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 beat us there, and you left before. But all yeah. he was talking about, he was like, "You live in Vegas?" I go, "Yeah." And he was, "I've got a gambling problem," <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck yeah, me too." And he was like, "How do you live there with a gambling problem?" I'm like, "I just stay home." He was like, "I couldn't do it." I couldn't do it. <laughs> they have casinos in Glasgow. We were yeah, staying but, down the street from one. Yeah, and he was like, I make sure nobody pays me cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. But I had like some, we had a great... Um, you had the funny cab drivers. Oh my God. But when we got to that airport, I will say, it was, I, I, for me also, parting with you there was a bit of a bummer because you and I had talked about Amsterdam. For months. Yeah. For like six months, dude. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, Belfast and Manchester are smaller, blue-collar cities. So right. It's not a huge destination, but I really like those vibes. The other ones were destination, Dublin, Glasgow, mm-hmm. Oslo, Stockholm. Yeah. Amsterdam is at the bottom of that list of places. Really? At my age, jammed with people. Jam, 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 jam. 
And it's like going down to the strip for people who live here. Okay, fair enough. It's all uh, it's all tourists in that one area. And and you know what somebody told me? They were like, listen, dude, if you're over 30 and you're Dutch and you smoke weed, people think you're a loser. Like, you, you know, what? The people there aren't smoking the weed. It's just the tourists. And if you're over 30 and smoking weed there, they think you're a fucking loser. That's the way it was explained to me. That that's kid shit. Now you might take some, start taking some ketamine. That's some real shit. Grown up drugs, but there's grown up drugs and there are kid drugs. And weed there is a kid drug, dude. Guess what? I'm sticking with my fucking kid drugs. Yeah, dude. I'm What's gonna the... sticky I'm with you. That that. Now, what I'm... is the point of being the hub of places? One of the like weed friendliest places in the world. If none of like you're all obviously weed friendly, but like tourists. Weed enthusiastic, Tour- none of you care. Tourists. So everybody in the coffee shop you went to was a tourist? Most, yeah. It's like there's Except no, the people working there? It's no locals, dude. And it's also like you can tell the woman behind the when she was there, she was like, You're American, huh? I said, Yeah, how do you know? She goes, You smoked that whole joint. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, What do you mean? That is Awesome. She said, you know, the she what? said the people in the UK, they take three hits and they're like, I'm so high. Well, yeah, they can't because they, because they, they don't roll get splits. They don't get the weed. Well, no, no, but, it's because they don't roll just like also, joints. The weed isn't as good. That right? too, yeah. But the weed, we get better weed than everybody. Especially in Amsterdam, if you want good weed in the Netherlands, you don't go downtown Amsterdam. That's the tourist weed. You got to go out away. So where where do you where do you find the good wheat? Not down there. That's dude. It was fascinating the the way it was explained to me. But I will tell you this. Um, and I would go back with you because I just want to do it. Do they do they also think drinking is unacceptable there? No. Um, but but like um, that's the way it was explained to me. I could be wrong. Dutch people don't get mad at me. Um, but you could get mad at me. We're gonna fight. The fucking here's what blew me away about Amsterdam. First of all. The bicycles. bicycles. Dude, there are, it's like ring, ring, and they're flying. Ving, ving, zing, zing, zing. You think they're aggressive in Portland? The Portland bicyclists are like pussies. <laughs> the, the Amsterdam bicyclists will punch a Portland bicyclist in the fucking face and then pee in their mouth as they drive by. There's no slowing down. They don't ving, zing, boom, zing, ding. And you just hear ring, 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 ring. It's like a nightmare. There's just bells ringing all over the place. And they're boom, boom, ding. I saw a bicyclist hit a tourist on foot. And then everybody was like, get, get out of the fucking way to the tourist. Dude, the, and the cars have to slow down. But they're driving an inch away from the bicyclist. And the bicyclist was like, no. And it was pouring rain. And they're just all, but I'll tell you something right now. Not one, and, and, and this really in Europe, the, when I, they, they give normal size plates of food and everybody walks or hops on the bike. I did not see any obese people. Mm. It was so alarming. You know what else? No SUVs, no enormous, all the gluttonous part of our, now I, I'm going to say this guys, I still think America is the best country in the world, but this trip reminded me that that doesn't mean we don't have things to learn. And by the way, guys, I've, I've mentioned the obese thing. I'm a dude who thinks you should eat and you want to be obese. That's, this is your body, your choice. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we also all have to close our eyes and go, it's good for you. Yeah. There, you can be body, body positive and celebrate the way you look and wear the clothes you want to wear. But also the reality of is you're going to die sooner than other people. You don't see any very fat old people, do you? No. No. You don't see Uh, any really huge old people, do you? No. That's a probably a very, very, very small. So let's, let's like two things can be true at once. And nobody's saying, nobody's shaming you by saying that if you're super big, you're generally not going to be as healthy as other people. That's just a fact. Right. I'm, I'm also saying you, Enjoy yourself and celebrate what you look like. Yeah. But yo, dude, the gluttonous part of the States, the extra big truck with the fucking huge wheels, the SUV, the huge plates of food. Mm -hmm. It was, and the pace with which people eat and how much, you know, when we had a food reservation in Oslo, they were like, cool, this table's yours from one to three. And I was like, what? 
what do you, they were like, well, that's everybody gets two hours at a table. And I was like, two, we're going we're gonna to be done food ordered in a plate eaten and out of here in 30 minutes. She was like, you can, but yeah. It, and so it slowed me down, but Amsterdam, dude, the show in Amsterdam, standing ovation and and I had an, oh, a, a, a local guy open for me, this dude from Chicago, oh, oh, nice. who's amazing. And, uh, dude, it was like, it was so cool to be there at that super dope venue. Mm -hmm. But I do wish that we had had a chance, you and I. We didn't even eat a meal. That's how short a time we were there. Well, yeah, because the, whole, the whole day we had planned got thrown out the fucking window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't even eat. I had a cinnamon roll, a joint. I didn't eat any mushrooms because they're truffles and too many. Um, but like that Amsterdam show was spectacular. We did miss you though. And I do want to go back and do Amsterdam with you. Yeah. I definitely we're gonna go back. I definitely I, want I don't to need back. to do more than two or three days, but max. Max two days. Oh honestly, we can do two days and leave on the third. I just want a couple days to just kind of get yeah, fucked up and go. Yeah, yep, that's pretty it. much it. Yep. Um, but but I will tell you, dude, Oslo and Stockholm ch may have changed me permanently. I loved the style. Everybody, it was such an elevated, elegant look. I didn't see. I don't know, man. I just I looked at the way these dudes my age were dressing and the way I dress, and there was no guys and my age and like hoodies and sneakers and I don't mind the sneakers, but I, I want to, I think I'm really tired of the hat hoodie t-shirt look, but I haven't quite figured out where I, what I want it to be next. But Stockholm really uh, was like, uh, I think maybe the first step, for you would be not the hat because it's, I feel like the hat is comfort for you. It is. So I feel like maybe the first thing we should go for is we should take out the hoodies and instead of hoodies, we should add layers. So we should do a, a lighter, softer crew neck. I'll make sure you understand this sweatshirt. And then you want to layer it with something else on top, like another jacket. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I would just start because I think still the sneakers are still you're still good with that. But like, I wouldn't say like, I would do it like a, a jumper or a sweater. And then I'd do like, we, you'd have to get like more coats instead of just jackets. Cause the jean jacket and the bomber and stuff is still keeping you in that same I th area. I, th I think hat has to go to as much as I don't want it to. It's like, you know, when you'll, you'll be able to tell that I am 100% okay with me is the day that I start going on stage without that. Not walking around without it. I, I walk around without it sometimes. Right. But the day that I go on stage without the hat will be the day, because it'll take a long time for people to get used to. Honestly, there's two things. <sighs> like for me, it'll be distracting for people. That's what I was going to say. I feel like and, people and are... So it'll be distracting. Those first couple shows aren't going to be good because people are... right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I but I really do want to get rid of it. I, I I really by the way, I sat next to John Leguizamo in Stockholm at a deli, which was weird. Who? One of my all time heroes as far as storytellers. I watched his one man shows over and over again before I did mine. Did you say anything to him? I did. I was a little nervous to talk to him. But I just told him, I go, hey dude, as a storyteller, to me, you are top of the fucking ladder. And I'm just so fucking so much of a fan. And he was like, Yeah, thanks. He was like, and I he was like, What are you doing here? I said, I got a show here tonight. He was like, Oh, good luck. But that, by the way, the Stockholm Theater was far the best, the best That's venue awesome. of the best venue. But but I I I it changed me in so many ways, this trip. It changed me in that. First, in, in that how I, I think I, how I want to dress a little bit. I want to, but also it changed my view on where we live. Again, I, I hold your, if you don't like it, leave it. Yeah. Because I still think America is the best place in the world. Right. We have a lot to learn, man. 
we're we're an entitled we're an entitled group, right? Yo, I, there was an American um, in Stockholm who was upset that somebody in Stockholm didn't speak great English. Yo, dude, at the show? No, 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 no. out. Oh, there was look, yo. All those people, we just walk around like like um, everybody needs to know our shit. Right. Like, I'm going to say feet, and I'm going to say, you know, pounds, and you're just going to have to figure out what I mean by that. Yeah. You're going to have to translate. You know what I mean? You know what? When I, you know, in London, I tell a joke, and there's a possum in the joke. And I said, Oh, oh, the, the, I said yeah. to the people, I go, You know what a possum uh. is? And they were like, Yeah. I go, But you don't have a possum here, right? And they go, No. And it dawned on me. That is the most non-American thing in the world. If it doesn't happen in our country, nobody knows shit about it. <laughs> Yo, nobody, nobody in our country knows who the fucking prime minister is. Or People know things. They're more worldly. Yeah, It's so insular, our life is. It was so amazing to me that when I was in Dublin or when I was in Stockholm, it's just people from all other countries. They just cross into other countries mm -hmm. so freely that you see how other people live. You learn other languages. You learn other, other ways, other people's um, past and the, their countries. And it, 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 it opens up your mind to where you're not this right. singular thing in the world. And I think it's so good. I think it's so good. And I think it's a problem that, you know, that, that a lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of people in America won't be able to see but in order to broaden your horizons, it's important to see how other people live and and other people's history. Right, all that shit is so important. I was I was I was really blown away by by um, Europe and and um, its history and how how cool and how easily those multi cultures walked amongst each other. Right. Yeah, they don't have possums in London. You know what they have? Foxes. Yeah, they do have a couple of foxes. I saw one. You did? When I was at Jake's, we were walking out. We were going, they have a 24-hour McDonald's on their street. Dangerous. But so we came back from uh, the Halloween party and then went to get some McDonald's. And as we popped out, there was just a little fox who scurried on his way. Dude, the people in Stockholm, gorgeous. Gorgeous. That's what I hear. But Oslo and Stockholm was, were such fucking great surprises for me. Good. I never thought that I in that stock that Oslo show was sold out. You know, dude, that I had the the food in Oslo in in Stockholm were just like uh, next level. Right. I just wanted to eat all the fucking time. Right. The weed law is very strict. Um, very strict. Mm. Um, but somebody found me some weed on my show in Oslo, which was amazing. Amazing. People, I got to tell a joke about you not coming. At the beginning of all the shows in Europe, which were amazing. Yep. Um, but yeah, man, I I I was so feel so grateful this this trip, and I and I and I I, I want you to know how how amazing it is that you and I can go over seas and have such a response and have mm -hmm. people legitimately shaking in the meet and greet line. Yeah, it's so humbling. I'm, I'm, I, and I'm, I'm, I feel, just feel so lucky right now to be where I am. Absolutely. It was, it was definitely a, it was definitely a good time for while well, it lasted at least. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry that happened to you, dude. Yeah. But you know what? We'll be back. Yep. I guess that's true. Now, listen, we're going to do another podcast next week. Hopefully emails. Okay. What's the email? Hey man pod with three A's. No, no Hey Man podcast. Is it? Mm, hey Man pod. At gmail.com. Yeah, three A's. Exclamation point? Nope. No exclamation point. Did nope. I already say that? No, but you do it every time. You were pretty good for the last couple of weeks of not saying exclamation point. Hey Man pod, three A's at, at gmail.com. Gmail. Mm -hmm. Send in your questions. We're going to, because next week we're going to be in Naples, so we're going to film one beforehand. But do uh, you have anything you want to add? No, nah, man. You know, you know what it is. Like, we're very happy to be where we are right now and being able to still 
you know, go to cities that we go to all the time and still have you guys come out and say what's up and come see a fun new show every year. Um, and this, this year is two year, two months from being over. My first year on tour is almost at amazing. a close. Um, amazing. Uh, and so we can't wait to do it again with you guys next year. Um, and thank you everybody for came out in UK and, 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 uh, in Europe. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that, uh, I missed you guys. I, I promise you it wasn't, I mean, actually it was my fault, I guess, but like not intentionally my yeah. fault. Um, and we will be back. It can't happen again the next time we come to Europe because my passport will be brand new and good for 10 years. That's so, right. We'll see you guys next time we come out there. Thank you guys for everything. Um, yeah. Do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love them. That's it. Do you mean that today? I mean it. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody. We love you. We'll talk to you soon.